This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior All the day long This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior you and it's so good to be with you again. So we've been talking about Moses and his life long ago and all about his relationship with God. Now the Bible is full of lessons to learn from Moses. So we've only chosen I think about nine stories to share with you. So what have we learned so far? Well we've definitely learned that Moses and God had a really good relationship. Remember what kind of relationship they had? They had an intimate relationship. Do you remember what that means? Well, it means that they were really close. They were really good friends and they just knew each other really well. Now God spoke to Moses in many different ways and he looked after Moses. Do you know that God looks after us too? He really does. And he's always with us. We can trust him to look after us and give us exactly what we need. Just like he did for Moses. Now last week's lesson, we learned that Pharaoh finally let God's people go. We learned all about Passover and how God protected his people once again. Do you know what, boys and girls? God protects us. So, for this lesson, there's quite a lot of things you need. So, I'm going to run through those things quickly. And if you forget, just pause the video or go forth and rewind a little bit and just listen again. So, you need a red piece of paper, a blue piece of paper, and a brown. If you don't have these colors, just use white paper and color it in. Then you're going to need some googly eyes. You're going to need your Bible. You're definitely going to need some crayons, scissors, and a glue. And for the game, you're going to need a blanket or a towel. I hope you remember everything you need to get. Your countdown starts now. Boys and 
boys and girls, do you have everything? It's okay. You can pause the video and get everything that you need later too. But let's pray now. Up, two, three. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the lessons we are learning. Thank you that we're learning that you are always with us that you always protect us just like you protected Moses and your people long time ago. Father God, please be with us this morning and thank you for a new lesson. And that means something new to learn about you and what you did for your people and what you do for us. Please bless this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's time to get up and worship together. So everybody, let's get up and dance and sing and praise God to the song for your glory. played the game called cat and mouse now you need your whole family to play this game decide who's going to be the cat that's actually the baddie and who's going to be the mouse and the rest of your family has to make a circle and hold hands now the mouse stands inside the circle and the cat stands outside the circle the people holding hands have to protect the mouse from the cat and they have to either let the, the mouse get into the circle or out of the circle as the mouse is being chased by the cat. 
hmm, that sounds a little bit complicated. But have a look at this video to see how to play this game and then make a time to play it with your family later today. Have fun! Last week, we learned all about a special day called Passover. And do you know that the Jewish people still celebrate that festival today? It's called Pesach, and it happens every single year. Back to the Bible story. The Bible story was about when God told the Israelites to cook a lamb um, for a special supper, and then they had to wipe the blood of the lamb on the sides and the tops of the door frames. Now, that sounds terrible, but God was teaching them a very special lesson. That, and I'll, I'll, I'll chat to you about that in a second. That very night, the Bible says, an angel went through the whole land of Egypt and everywhere where there was not blood on the side of the door and on the top, the firstborn was killed. The firstborn child died in, in that house. Where there was blood on the door frame, that protected the family and nothing happened to the firstborn. Now, this was, must have been a terrible night. And when, when Pharaoh saw that his firstborn and the firstborn of all the animals and all the people had died, he was shaken to his core and he decided to finally let the Israelite people go. All the Israelite people packed up their bags and they left together in the middle of the night. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret. That blood on the door, can you remember that Jesus shed his blood for us? So that blood protected them, just like the blood of Jesus much later would protect us just because we put our trust in him. Today, though, we're going to learn how God continued to protect them because once they left Egypt, that was only the start of their journey. It wasn't the end. Have a listen to what Hannah is telling us about the rest of the Bible story. Hi, Shine. My name is Hannah, and I will be reading today's Bible story. The Israelites were walking away from Egypt to the land that God had promised them. God showed them where to walk, by showing them a pillar of fire during the night and a cloud during the day. Pharaoh changed his mind about letting the Israelites go and sent his army after them to bring them back. The Israelites were trapped. In front of them was the Red Sea and behind them was Pharaoh's army. On either side were mountains, they did not know what to do. The Israelites were scared and started shouting at Moses. Moses told them to not be afraid and reminded them that God would protect them. God moved his cloud between, between the Israelites and Pharaoh's army. The army couldn't see where the Israelites were. God told Moses to, rise, to raise his staff over the sea. Then the Lord pushed back the, the sea and made a path for the Israelites to walk on. They walked through the sea to the other side. But Pharaoh's army were close behind. Moses raised his staff again, and the path closed, and the sea swallowed up Pharaoh and his army. Moses and all the Israelites were so happy. Finally, they were free. They danced, sang, and praised God for protecting them. That was an incredible story. And now... I think we need to get up. Don't sit still. Don't lie in bed. Don't stop snuggling. I saw that. Get out of bed and let's worship to this next video. Right now because I 
So I want you to listen carefully to my instructions and do what I tell you. You will see a picture from the story come up on your screen and you are going to have to either hop, jump or crawl to it. So stand about 10 big steps away from your TV screen so that you've got space to move. After moving, I'm going to ask you a question about the picture and let's see if you can answer it correctly. So the first picture it's, is a picture of Pharaoh and his army. Now hop towards this picture. Who can tell me why the army was chasing the Israelites? Can you remember? Because Pharaoh had changed his mind, hadn't he? He didn't want the Israelites to go anymore. Right, go back to your space, away from your TV. Okay, next picture. I want you to jump with two feet together to this picture of Moses and the Israelites in the dark. Now, who can tell me how God showed the people where to go during the night? And how God... How did God show people where to go during the daytime? Well, during the night, it was a pillar of fire. And during the day, it was a pillar of cloud. 
Right, go back to your space away from your TV. Now for the next picture, you are going to have to crawl. So crawl to the picture of Moses in the middle of the sea. Tell me, how did God help the Israelites get over the Red Sea and away from Pharaoh and his army? Well, the Bible says God sent a big wind and the wind blew all night. And then the wind blew the sea apart and there was a pathway for them to cross. And the Bible says they crossed on dry land. Now, boys and girls, that must have been amazing. Imagine walking on the bottom of the sea and on your left and on your right are these huge big walls of wave. That must have been amazing to see. You know, children, when the Israelites came to the Red Sea and Pharaoh and his army were behind them, they were scared. They didn't know what to do. It seemed like there was no way out. But God made a way. God is in control of everything, even the sea and the weather. He can do anything. He looks after us and he protects us because we are his children. So remember, boys and girls, just the way that God looked after Moses and the Israelites, God can look after us too. Okay, it's game time. Now, remember that big blanket that you were supposed to get? If you haven't got it, please go grab it. I'm going to use the blanket. Right. So what you're going to do is you're going to need two people. One is going to play an Israelite, and the other one's going to play an Egyptian. Then you need the rest of the family to hold the blanket. So grab the blanket, hold on either side, and then the two contestants, the Israelite and the Egyptian, are going to run towards the blanket. Now, leave the blanket loose in your hands. As the Israelite comes, make sure you drop the blanket onto the floor so the Israelite can pass. When the Egyptian comes, then you lift up the blanket. And the Israelite, I mean, the Egyptian can't pass. It'll be quite a fun, fun game. Then, if you're quite clever, you can try and vary your speed and try and trick your family if you're the, the Egyptian to try and get across. Make sure you don't hurt yourself now. Now, I want you to watch Hannah and Rebecca and her family play this game, and then you can play it with your family as well. Remember, have fun. Don't get hurt now. Go back. Three. Go back. 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 Go now, that's a very fun game, boys and girls. And I challenge you to play that with your family and then take a video and share it with us because we'd love to see how you played it. So, boys and girls, it's time for that part of the lesson where we need the red piece of paper, your scissors, and the two googly eyes. Now, if you don't have the googly eyes, you can just draw eyes. Okay. So, let's take... Let's make our heart. We're going to make a heart with this piece of paper. So take your paper and you're going to fold it like this. And then once you've folded it, you can draw half a heart on the fold. There's the fold. And then cut only on the line so that it looks like that. And then you're going to open it up and there's your heart. So as we hold in our hearts, I want us to remember our Bible story. Remember that God is always with us, that he's protecting us. That's how much God loves us, boys and girls. Sometimes he does, he even does miracles, just like this miracle in the Bible story today. That's an incredible miracle. I can't do that. Only God can do that. 
You can't do that either. Not even the strongest person can do that. Only God can. Now, he did a miracle and he opened up that Red Sea for the Israelites to protect them from Pharaoh and his army. Now, as you hold in your heart, I want you to take your googly eyes or just make some eyes on your heart. Like that. Just like that. Now, if you don't have googly eyes, remember, draw them on. Now, these are the eyes of our hearts. So pretend this is your heart. And these are the eyes of your heart. Doesn't mean that you've actually got eyes in your heart. It just means that we're going to ask God and spend some time with God now, asking him to open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see deeply what he's doing around us and how he's working and protecting us and how he's always with us every single day. So I want you to find a spot now where it's just you, nothing to distract you. You can sit, you can lie down, and I want you to take your heart and put it on your heart and hold it there because we're going to spend some time with God now. We're going to ask him to open up the eyes of our hearts so that we can see how he protects us every day, every minute, and how he loves us and gives us exactly what we need. So I want you to lie down quietly as I pray. Thank you, Lord, for always being with us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you that you're God of miracles. Please open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see how you're working around us. Sometimes we feel like just not doing anything, Lord. But that just means that our eyes aren't open enough. We're not seeing what you're doing. Help us to open the eyes of our hearts so we can see what you are doing around us. Please help us to see all the miracles that you do for us every day and how you provide for us every single day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now we're going to do a memory verse. But before we do that, I want to quickly show you something. This is my dog. He is very worried right now. Sometimes he's very peaceful and he just sleeps. But right now, there are people walking around the neighborhood, so he's very worried. Now, we are a bit like that as well. Sometimes when everything goes right, then we are very peaceful. Other times, when there are things going on in our lives that, that upset us um, or make us scared, then we don't have any peace at all. Now, last week, we learned a new memory verse, and it goes like this. It's found in John 14, verse 27. Jesus speaks to his disciples and he says, I give you peace. My peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world does. So don't let your hearts be troubled or afraid. And just to remind you, that's John 14, 27. So just like my dog, sometimes we feel anxious or afraid about the things in our life. But Jesus says that the peace that God gives is the opposite of that. And the peace that God gives us helps us to feel calm and hopeful and happy even. And it's not at all dependent on what we're going through. In other words, no matter what we're going through, we can still have God's peace. Nobody else can give us peace like that. So when we look in, in our story, Moses got to, this, to, the, to the Red Sea and there was nowhere to go. And behind him was the Egyptians and God gave him peace. God also gave him a solution. Now let's all get up and worship together to the song that goes with this verse.
Boys and girls, it's time for this week's challenge. So this week, I want you to remind your family that God looks after them and protects them every single day and helps them with whatever they need help with. I want you to choose a time when you are all together. Maybe it's driving in the car or maybe it's sitting around the table at dinner time. Whenever you can be all together and then I want you to ask your family about how God has looked after them that day and ask them to share their story with you. But boys and girls, remember, you also need a story to share. So we need to keep asking God to open the eyes of our heart so that we can see him at work around us so that we've got a story to share with our family about how God has helped us or protected us. And they have a story, the same kind of story to share with us. Let's all pray together. Everybody, up, two, three. Father God, thank you that you are always with us. Thank you, Father God, that you are a big, strong, powerful God, a God who can do miracles. Thank you, Father God, that we do not have to worry because you are with us and you are the one who helps us. Lord, I pray that you would open the eyes of our heart so that we can see you working around us. I pray, Father God, that you would fill us with your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. So it's time to make something. Boys and girls, you need your blue piece of paper now and your brown paper or cardboard. Remember, if you don't have these colors, just use white and color it in blue and brown or paint it. Then you're gonna need this worksheet that Auntie Lynette has sent your parents. But let's first take the blue pieces of piece of paper. So we're gonna take this blue piece of paper and you're gonna fold it in half like that and you're gonna cut it. So then you've got two pieces of paper that looks like that. Then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut slits in the paper like that. Not all the way, just halfway. And once you've cut all the way down and the other side, you're going to curl the paper like that. So it looks like the sea. So it looks like the waves. So you just curl it like that. Like that. And then make it jump up. You do it all the way down so that it looks like that. Both sides, there, boys and girls, both sides. Then you're going to take your brown piece of paper. It will work nicely if you use cardboard. You're going to take that and you're going to take your blue and you're going to stick it on like that. And then you're going to stick it on like that. And now it looks like the path that God made for the Israelites. Now, take this piece of paper and cut it out on those lines. Don't cut the fold, though, because it's going to help to make the Israelites stand up like this. I'll show you. Oh. See, you're going to do that. Then... Close up, you'll see the little dots there. Cuts along there, but not on the fold, so that they can look like this, a little bit more like people. And then you fold these things up so that it can stand. But remember to color it in, boys and girls, so it will look really cool. Then you take all your Israelites and your Red Sea, or in this case, it's Blue Sea, and you let your Israelites walk through the path. Oh, let's get the other ones like that. Walk through the path, just like in today's Bible story. Enjoy making this at home, boys and girls. I'm sure everyone's going to get involved doing this. So it's come to the end of our lesson again. Oh, it goes so quickly, right? We hope you have a really incredible week and we hope to see you all again soon again. Bye. Bye. Bye.